Hey folks, this is Paul on a Saturday morning again talking about A Course in Miracles and today we're going to cancel death we're going to deny the power of death to do anything to you we're going to be looking at the proper use of denial the use of denial to work miracles the use of denial to resurrect and to protect you now, <clears throat> I always like to start with the biggest picture possible because that frames everything correctly. So, starting in heaven, before the separation, you're happy with God, you're creating, you're extending love. And reality is the truth. Reality is permanently real. And this permanence, this immortality, um, cannot be affected by anything, it can't be changed. It's always the same as Jesus says, reality is a constant state. And so you don't have the power, no one has the power to alter what God has created. It is forever, it is eternal, it is safe, it is protected. So all, all that you can do is accept it. Uh, but your mind also has the freedom to deny um, creation. You have the free will to be able to try to use will against itself, to try not to will, to be unwilling, which is kind of a rejection and a denial and a, a resistance against God's will, against the truth. But this state is only a state of denial because you actually can't change the truth. You can't stop reality from being permanently real. So you can't make it go away. So all that you can do is you can pretend that it's not there. You can bury your head in the sand, hide your eyes, uh, try not to be aware of it in order to create this illusory state that that you believe it's gone away. So all that you can do is you can either accept reality or you can deny reality. And when you deny it, all it does is it blocks it from your awareness, but it doesn't actually change reality. Reality is still there. It's kind of like the sun behind the clouds. Just because there are some clouds that seem to block your awareness of the sun, the sun is still shining behind the clouds and has not changed at all. So in denial, you try to convince yourself, try to believe that reality is not there, God is dead, you don't, you're not the self that God created, you don't exist, you don't have eternal life, you're not immortal. And so this denial of your immortality um, produces this sort of fictional belief, a mistaken belief, because it's not true. It's not true that you don't have immortality, but in denial, you just refuse to accept it. So you go into this mental state of blockage and unawareness and unconsciousness. And that unconsciousness is an attempt not to exist it's an attempt not to be aware of reality of existence of God and it produces what we call a state of death and it's because it's a fiction because it's a, a made-up self-deception and you're trying to convince yourself yeah God is, doesn't exist anymore because I'm not aware of him and I'm not the self that God created anymore. I've changed into an evil monster. This is, uh, you start having what we call dreams. The mind goes into sort of a, a sleeping state because it's, it's repressing itself and denying its own freedom. And so in this unawareness, in this denial, denial basically suppresses life. It suppresses awareness, suppresses existence and is sort of like trying to shut down what exists, <laughs> shut down your awareness to sort of 
get rid of yourself and and so it turns into a, a fictional make-believe dream-like sleeping barely conscious kind of a state that is a dream of death and it's a dream of opposition to reality so it, it takes on all the possible ways that you could imagine being opposite to the truth opposite to eternal life opposite to immortality, opposite to happiness and love and peace and joy, opposite to sharing. In denial of those things, you produce an internal mental state that believes in the opposite to those things, the opposite of heaven. It's, it's a, you, you make hell. <laughs> you made hell to oppose God's kingdom. And this world, including planet Earth, is the opposite of um, the kingdom. It is the idea of opposition. Everything about it is opposite and backwards to how things are in reality. And it's a world that was made as a place where God could enter not. Uh, it's the world of bodies, is the world of sin, it's the idea that you've, you've attacked reality and sinned against it. Um, uh, you, which made you guilty. It is guilt that has obscured the Father to you and it is guilt that has driven you insane. Being in this state of like denial, it's like in, it's in a state of insanity. It's madness. The tiny mad idea was, was madness to believe that God isn't there or you've killed God or you don't exist anymore. It's, it's insane. Uh, the world of bodies arises in this dream, this fiction, the hero of the dream, the, the body is a dream. The world of bodies is the world of sin, for only if there were a body is sin possible. And the wages of sin is death. Sin, this, this whole, basically the denial of God is the ego's religion. It is, it is the antichrist, it is the attempt to reject everything real, everything true, everything godlike, everything divine, everything holy, and oppose it and produce the exact opposite and try to give reality to and permanence to the opposite, to try to make constant death, permanent non-existence, absolute uh, suffering, constant sickness, as a protest, as a denial and a rejection of the true nature of God's kingdom. And so this world that we made, the world is a picture of the crucifixion of God's Son. It's, it's, it's the denial of the perfection of God's Son, which is you, and an attack upon that perfection, an attempt to crucify him you and so this world this dreaming this denial world is a world of the, of the attempt to destroy you to destroy God's son and so this this world that we made this whole entire universe of time and space all the physical matter and the planets and the bodies and everything is all a picture of the crucifixion of God's son it's it's how we we visualized what it would look like for God's son to be attacked and vulnerable and damageable and destroyable and self-destructive and self-hating and self-denying. This is what it looks like. Uh, the world that you see is the delusional system of those made mad by guilt. Look carefully at this world and you will realize that this is so. So we made a world to, to be opposite to God and it's so, because God is eternal life, it's a world that asserts the idea of death, that tries to promote and suggest and tempt you with this, the notion that death is real everything is destroyable, nothing is safe, uh, 
nothing makes sense, everything is insane, um, everything is, is under attack, there's sin everywhere, sin is real, it's irreversible, damage has occurred, uh, just this condemnation of, of reality. Now, let me find, there's another couple of lines I want to, I found them this morning, let me see, come on, here yeah, boy, come on, okay, this world is the opposite to heaven being made to be its opposite, and everything here takes a direction exactly opposite of what is true. That's pretty profound. This whole world is taking a direction opposite to what is true. It is asserting, suggesting, promoting absolute bullshit, total lies, no truth whatsoever complete and total fiction a protest against God a, a, an attempt to defy reality absolutely unreal totally illusion the world you see is an illusion of a world a world that is backwards Jesus says in the course the world is false perception False perception is backwards perception, where you believe that what is outside you causes you, that this world is the cause of you. This, it is the total opposite of true perception. Um, God did not make two minds, with heaven as the glad effect of one, and earth the other sorry outcome, which is heaven's opposite in every way. I don't think many people realize just how entrenched and deep the the how unlike earth is to heaven when you're not forgiving it of course because when you get into forgiveness you can start to shine a light onto it and, and see love in it because you're seeing from love but in its basic form we made hell to be an attack on God. The world was made as an attack on God. And it runs in a direction exactly opposite to reality. So now you find yourself in the world, a crazy world, an insane world, a backwards world, a world that is trying to push the idea that death is normal and natural and real that is suggesting that everything can be attacked, is promoting sin all over the place, is filled with death worship, idol worship, rejection of God, and just even its very nature is, is opposite to the truth. And so, so we're living inside a huge lie. We're inside a gigantic, massive, universe-sized pile of shit. <laughs> Everything about it is false. Um, <clears throat> so in truth, because reality is permanent and perfect, it cannot be attacked. Nothing real can be threatened, um, which means that you cannot sin. You cannot sin against reality. You cannot attack God. You cannot go against His will. You cannot hurt Him. You cannot change Him. You cannot destroy Him or yourself. That is the truth. It is false that you can do any of those things. Denying God was a belief in and an attempt to give reality and truth to those things to suggest that they are possible. And this idea that you did sin and you can sin uh, <coughs> is 
because it's not true in the big picture. It's a mistaken belief. So being in a belief in sin, being in denial, is being mistaken. It's a rejection of sanity and truth. So everything that sin suggests, everything that bodies suggest, everything that the world suggests, appearances, physical objects, all of it is uh, a mistake. <laughs> it is all false. There's no truth to it. <clears throat> um, Jesus says, in this world all events are nowhere and the changes wrought are substanceless. There are no consequences just to the illusion of sin. And so even the world of bodies is the world of sin, for without a body sin must not be possible. So now you've got bodies attacking bodies, trying to prove that sin is real, trying to make guilt be reality. I just saw something about this this morning. <clears throat> It is not will for life, but wish for death, that is the motivation of this world. Its only purpose is to prove guilt real. No worldly thought or act or feeling has a motivation other than this. <laughs> uh, to deny God is to deny your identity. And in this sense, the wages of sin is death. Because if you are going to reject your identity in God and try to assert that you're not like the way God created you, you are rejecting eternal life, you're rejecting health and happiness and wholeness and perfection. And what can you, what can you end up with if you do that? You're, you're, just, you're only going to accept and allow illusions of, lies about, suffering, vulnerability, weakness, damage, threat and danger, sickness and death. So if you believe that sin is real and that you sinned, you will destroy yourself, try to destroy yourself by destroying your body and make yourself killed. To the ego, sin means death and atonement is achieved through murder. Um, the laws of sin demand a victim. <laughs> Sickness is the witness to guilt, and death proves that errors must be sins. So we've, it's extraordinary to consider that this whole world, the world of bodies that we're here right now, is completely backwards. 180 degrees opposite to truth everything it does and says and teaches and suggests and, sh and shows demonstrates is a lie <laughs> there's no truth to any of it it is all a protest against reality it is unlike heaven it is opposite to God and it's an attempt to assert that death is real. If you were to totally deny God, it would produce a state of death. Um, but death, even death itself, does not change the fact that you have eternal life. <laughs> because remember, this is just denial. Being in, being in a state of death, being in a dream of death, being unconscious, is a state of denying that you have permanent, unlimited, endless life in God. It's a rejection of, an attempt to hide from, a blocking out of, I don't want to see that, I don't want to admit that it's there, of your eternal life that God gave you and can never be revoked. So even death, even the illusion of death when we make the body dead and suffer, it still does not change or influence the Son of God whatsoever, has no effect whatsoever on creation, has not a single change in heaven, doesn't cause anything. God is unaffected, you are unaffected, you still have eternal life 
outside this dream of the, the blindness to having eternal life. Nothing so blinding as perception of form. This world was made to deceive you. It, this is hell. It is as opposite to heaven as you can get. And so that leaves us in a very challenging position because now we need to find a way to get back to sanity and get back to who we really are and to accept atonement, which is accepting the truth instead of denying it. So how do you do that? What, what is the... <laughs> how do you get out of a world that lies to your face every second, tempts you to believe things that are not true, creates pictures and images of suffering and sickness and death that not one of them has reality. How do you get out of that? This stuck in a hole, everything's backwards, everything's upside down. Don't know whether you're coming or going. <laughs> Total confusion. So, because we've used denial to deny God, the solution is very simple. Flip it around and use denial to deny the bullshit deny the illusions, deny death, deny sickness, deny guilt and sin and fear, deny the world, deny the body. Because it was in the same way that your mind, you, it, your, your mind had, had an innate denial of non-existence, a denial of the possibility of death is natural and it's part of the mind and it's what part of God and it's it's normal it's what protects the kingdom that God completely denies death completely rejects everything that is opposite to life because God is life and God only expresses life and asserts extends uses life makes life creates life there is only life. There's, there is no life outside of heaven. Um, meaning that in heaven, everything is alive. So what we have to do is get back to that, that proper use of denial. The natural, aligned with God's will, use of denial. That now, instead of because it's not being it's not the denial itself as a as a functionality that's the problem it's that you've used denial in an inappropriate way to reject reality instead of using it to reject unreality so now the solution is to use denial appropriately to undo and reject the denial of the truth. Um, let's see here. So, like, if you if you believe that you have a body and you believe that the body is real and the world is real, and you're holding this belief, and then you try to assert that you don't believe this, and the body doesn't exist while still maintaining the denial of God, which is producing an investment in the body, and you're trying to do both at once, and you're just like, you're making bodies real while saying, I, I'm going to ignore my body, for example. You are in denial that you're in denial of God. You are denying that you still believe that, <laughs> that bodies are real. And so now the denial of God is not being undone and instead you are compounding denial by adding extra denial about being in denial. <laughs> this is the inappropriate use of denial because 
the body seems like a fact of existence because it's hard to deny and you seem to have one temporarily and if you try to get rid of the body while still sort of holding on to it believing in it making it you are denying that you are making it and so now instead of actually withdrawing the body by denying the body correctly which would entail reversing the denial of God which made the body in the first place you're keeping the denial of God and then you're denying that you're in denial of God so now you've got double denial it's an inappropriate use of denial but if you were to withdraw your belief that God is not true and God is unreal and <laughs> the denial of God if the denial of God were undone the body would disappear um, because it would be correctly denied appropriately denied using the power of denial to cancel it out by recognizing that it is nothing so the proper use of denial as a, as a protective device and as a correction and as the atonement and as a form of forgiveness is to get into true perception so that you can recognize illusions are illusions they're not true they're not real the temp not buying into temptation not falling for deception not believing appearances not even believing your senses because your your body is lying to you your your eyes are seeing illusions and making them real only the body makes the world seem real um so we're to use correcting perception to get perception to a true state so that you can see correctly and accurately and recognize that this world is nothing there is no world this is the proper use of denial there is no world uh, and what is recognized as nothing must disappear so what happens when you use proper denial to deny the denial of the truth that is showing up as sickness and death <laughs> it has to disappear it has to be undone it has to be reversed so if if you're if you're initially denying God denying eternal life and it puts you into a state of denial and the state of denial is a state of the rejection of health the rejection of life and it produces illusions of sickness and the body becomes sick if you deny that God has been denied if you deny that God is rejected if you deny that you don't have eternal life it's kind of a double negative if you assert that life is the only truth and death cannot exist and doesn't exist and isn't real it withdraws belief from that sickness it, it, it cancels it, it it flattens it it diminishes it it reduces it it makes it smaller it takes power away from it um, it cancels it, it deletes it, erases it, and um, reduces it in your mind because you're, you're coming to see that it isn't a big, strong, scary thing. It is absolutely nothing. And the recognition that it is, it is nothing, and it has no truth, and it is not real, is forgiveness, and this denial of the denial the denial of the denial of truth erases death cancels sickness and removes suffering 
let's find some quotes here. The resurrection. The resurrection is the denial of death, being the assertion of life. It's not enough to just try to get rid of the death. <coughs> you have to actually assert what is true, assert life, give life. Thus is all the thinking of the world reversed entirely. So again, to be a miracle worker, to be spiritual, to be awakened, you literally basically have to go against the world. You, you have to go against the grain of how the world works, how the body senses report that the world is really there and happening. Um, everything it suggests that is true, all of its temptations have to be rejected. You basically have to be in a position opposite to the world, which means thinking in a direction that is opposite the world entirely, where all your thinking is reversed from how you were thinking in the ego and believing this is all happening and real. <coughs> True denial is a very powerful protective device. You can and should deny any belief that error can hurt you. And error is, the forms of error is physical matter. So deny any belief that the world can hurt you. This kind of denial is not a concealment device, but a corrective device. The right mind of the mentally healthy depends on it. So wrongful denial is an attempt to conceal the truth and hide the truth. It's the blocking out, I don't want to see it, I don't want to accept it, I'm going to pretend it's not true. True denial, used correctly as a powerful protective device, protects your health, um, <clears throat> is, an, is not an attempt to hide the truth. It's not an attempt to conceal. And so it corrects. It's a corrective device and it corrects your perception and your mind and defends the truth in a sense, against the bullshit of the illusions. It denies the ability of anything which is not of God to affect you in any way. This is the proper use of denial. It is not used to hide anything, but it is used to correct error. It brings all error into the light, and since error and darkness are the same, it abolishes error automatically. So deny the ability of anything which is not of God, any ability to affect you in any way. And similarly, to deny that anything not of God has any power to affect anyone else in any way. And what is it that is not of God? Planet Earth, the whole fucking planet the solar system, the galaxy, this universe of space and time is not of God. It is the world we made to oppose and deny God, to shut out heaven's reality. So we have to deny that anything in this world, no matter the form it takes, has any ability to affect you or anyone else, or to define anything, or to establish any truth, <coughs> um, has no power to hurt anyone, and cannot overthrow the truth of your immortal being that God has established forever. <clears throat> um, okay, 
okay while we're in this world then we need to develop the ability to reject the world to not accept it Jesus is what you accept into your minds becomes real to you so you don't want to accept the world because if you do you're you're allow you're taking the world and saying this is my reality this is my truth I let this into me he's saying the world must be denied okay the world you see must be denied capital letters must be denied the sight of it is costing you a different kind of vision you cannot see both worlds for each of them involves a different kind of seeing and depends on what you would cherish the sight of one is possible because you have denied the other the world you see this world the physical world that you see with the body must be denied this means you're not in support of the world <laughs> it doesn't mean you're on the side of the world it means you you're kind of against it because the world is against God the world is against reality it is a, it is the opposite of reality it functions entirely opposite it suggests things that are not truth it, it pushes tempting ideas that suffering is real and possible when it isn't there is no suffering possible in God's reality it suggests that sickness and death can happen to those who are loved in God's kingdom it is impossible for those who are loved to ever be sick or die so which one are you gonna side with which one are you gonna side against because if you use denial against reality it will make you sick and dead if you use denial against the denial of reality it will protect you and heal you and make you immortal again it will raise the dead because it is the resurrection you you become the resurrection you become the assertion of life you promote life even though it totally goes against the grain of the of the world it breaks the laws of physics miracles break all the laws of the world because they they're coming from a perspective and a truth that is absolutely opposite to physical matter and everything in this world so the world that you see must be denied it must not be accepted people say accepting the world will bring you peace it, that's not how you get peace that's how you become passive it's how you be a victim you have to be active and asserting of the truth you are causal it's not enough to just get rid of the I am being affected by the world I want to be at peace I don't want any stress that is not spiritual awakening it is hiding in a corner and sitting on a fence and pretending that you are happy because you are not involved in the world but there's no power in that there is it's totally passive it is you might as well be dead your you, your task is to become empowered and causal and recognize you're a dreamer of the dream and miraculous and able to help and heal others the task of the miracle worker thus becomes to deny the denial of truth the sick must heal themselves for the truth is in them but having obscured it through their denial the light in another mind must shine into theirs because that light is theirs so people deny and reject God they deny themselves <coughs> they deny immortality <laughs> everyone's immortal and everybody's pretending to be sick sickness is an attempt to prove you can be hurt we're all faking it we're all bullshitting we're all lying and, and trying to suffer 
making the body suffer to try to prove that sickness is real and death is possible. It's fucking a big lie, a big gigantic lie. So your task as a miracle worker is to recognize someone has obscured their own health by d denying God, attacking themselves with a belief in sin, making themselves guilty. And this guilt is sickness. It is a demand for punishment. It's a de desire to suffer. It produces all physical illness. It's kind of like there's a light in your mind and then there's this big granite block of sin and, and the sin produces a shadow of guilt. The light shines, it's blocked by sin in the mind and a shadow where there seems to be an absence of love, which is what sin is, forms and this shadow projects as guilt. The guilt attacks the body and this guilt is the is what sickness is made of without guilt you cannot be sick the body cannot be sick without guilt the the sickness in the body is a physicalized symbolic shadow a reflection of the guilt in the mind it's somebody feels guilty they believe they should be hurt they desire suffering they think they deserve to be dead and so they make it happen in the body. Removing that block from the mind allows the light to shine and the shadow must disappear. The miracle does nothing. Some people like to quote this wrongly as suggesting that you don't do any miracles and miracles don't do anything. The miracle does nothing but all it does, which is a doing, it does do something. All it does is to undo. So it actually, there is actually an activity. Miracles produce an undoing. It's a, a cancelling, a shining away of darkness, a reducing of the shadow, a healing. And thus it cancels out the interference to what has been done it does not add but merely takes away so you could sort of say it's not a doing because it's not like adding something extra it's not c contributing a thing but it removes the denial removes the guilt removes the blockage and therefore the mind now is more healed um, So miracles are a proper use of denial. Performing a miracle is to cancel what is not true, to correctly identify it as an illusion, to not be deceived. Remember miracles reawaken the awareness that you are the dream of the dream. Get, they restore you back to true perception and then from that state of true perception you can now give love which is miraculous and healing in the song of prayer Jesus says um, forgive first then pray so you you work on forgiving work on cancelling your belief that someone is sick because if you believe that's a real sickness this person's really sick they're having a problem they're actually dying that's your problem that's your false belief because you're falling for the temptation somebody's putting a dream out there of a sick body and you're you're buying into it you're believing it so now you need some correction first before you can become helpful if you join with them in the illusion of the sickness, you are not being helpful whatsoever. Um, in fact, you make it worse. You, you, you're adding to the sickness and cursing them by holding them in the prison 
in the, of their own making. So if they've put themselves into this imprisoned state through denial, if you agree with them and believe you really are sick, aren't you? You really do have a real sickness, don't you? This is really serious. That is condemnation, it is imprisonment, it is an ego attack. And that is going to compound their vulnerability. Um, when someone attacks themselves, they create a mental state of vulnerability where they believe that they are susceptible to and sensitive to external causes where, where something is to come along and make contact with them, they will have a strong reaction. It's, it's like they use the mind to create a vulnerability and a sense of more attackability, sensitivity, damage, bruising. So, so then somebody attacks them. Um, having attacked themselves already, they've set themselves up to be sensitive to attack. And sort of like, I believe that I can be weakened by other people. I believe that other people have the power to do things to me. I believe that I can be victimized and I can actually suffer when someone does this. And so when they do it, your mind continues the self-attack and, and the rules that it's set up and you, your mind allows and supports and causes an increase in your self-cursing, which their cursing of you compounded and triggered. Um, that's my kind of insight into how that works. <laughs> so if, if you attack yourself, it makes you more susceptible to the attacks of others because your mind now welcomes and supports and agrees with being victimized. I forgot what I was talking about. Miracles. So a miracle would not attack, not believe the world, not agree with temptations, and not buy into this idea that that person is really sick. It would acknowledge that they think they're sick and they're suggesting that they are sick, but it's not true of them. And you would deny it. You use denial to deny that they are sick. But this is, it must not be a concealment. It mustn't be some kind of pretending to yourself. Oh, you, I, I, they really are sick and they need to go to the emergency room and I'm just going to sit here and pretend <laughs> that they don't while they're bleeding to death. That is an improper use of denial. It's, it's, it's not true denial. True denial would be the complete unbelief that there is a problem, truly. The cancellation of the sickness, the attunement to true perception, and then the emitting of life and love and power, causing a miracle of healing which heals your brother because it does not support his suggestion, his lie, that he's sick, and instead promotes that he is as God created him. He is still well. He is immortal. And he cannot be sick. He cannot be dead. The refusal to accept the bullshit would give you uh, openness to the power of God through you, to weaken your brother's belief in sickness and not support it. So if someone is sick, your task as a miracle worker is not to believe them. You know, you have to be careful not to be stupid about it and be in the false denial and, and just allow something terrible to happen if you could prevent it. But
you essentially have to have you have to hold the perspective that I'm not going to enter into this bullshit with you. I'm not going to buy that you're really sick. I do not believe it. Um, and instead to assert what is the real truth. You are not really sick. You are not diseased. You're not ill. You're not broken and damaged. You cannot be hurt. You are still a mortal. You don't really have a body. You're not this body. You are perfect. You're innocent. You're holy. Those are healing thoughts and they will give healing because um, you're asserting life. This is resurrection. You're, you're committing to acknowledging the Christ in them. Uh, it's kind of like you have to treat, even when you're here in the world with bodies, you kind of have to treat the person that seems to be a body as you would treat them in heaven while you're here. So if in heaven you're, you're, you're in perfect acknowledgement and awareness and not in denial yourself that your brother is perfect, innocent, immortal, invulnerable, unattackable, can never be sick, and that's perfectly true about them. And then you look at your brother, what are they doing? They're trying to promote that they aren't immortal, which is a lie. <laughs> they're trying to suggest that they're dead. They cannot be dead. They're trying to use sickness as an attack to suggest that they're guilty. They cannot be guilty because there is no sin. It, fr it correctly frames all this stuff and then you can recognize you're bullshitting right now. <laughs> You're, you're lying. This is a, a performance. This is like a fake death. All sickness is fake. All guilt is fake. Everything in this world is fake. It is an illusion of things being true. It isn't real. It's a dream. None of it's true. <laughs> it's very far-reaching, very profound. This whole world is a lie. It's a mistake. Uh, it's it's believing it is being mistaken because nothing that happens here can happen so when bodies seem to attack bodies and produce damage even though that seems very convincing and happening Jesus says all events are nowhere. Nothing in the history of mankind has ever happened. In reality, in truth, in God's kingdom, there hasn't been an attack. Nothing has been hurt. No one's been damaged. There hasn't been a war. There isn't dead bodies. So which one is true? Is God's truth true or is this world truth. Which one are you going to believe? Because <laughs> this world will, will put up a significantly intensely profound in your face every day suggestion that this stuff is the truth. This is reality. This is the real world. This is God's creation. This is happening. Sin is happening. This car crash is happening. This cancer is happening. This dead is, death is happening. This heart attack is happening. This emergency room situation is happening. And it does this by lying to you with bodies, with forms, with images, trying to, sh trying to show you a freaking lie to your face to say this is actually happening now and therefore it's real and therefore you should be freaking terrified out of your mind in, in worry and fear because something real is being threatened <laughs> some person as a body is in great danger they are being destroyed they are dying 
And what would it be if, if someone you love is dead on the ground? What is the world saying when it's telling you death is real, death has happened, your loved one is freaking dead in a pool of blood? Are you going to believe it? Because <laughs> if you fall for that, and it's very intensely, profoundly tempting, it is very, very hard to deny this. Believe me, I've been through absolute shit. It is, if you believe in it, if you buy into it, if you take it even for a second that it's even happening, you're gonna become terribly, terribly upset um, as a consequence. But God would say, this dead body cannot be. There is no death in reality, because everything real is immortal. How can this be? Which one of these is true? Only one of these can be true. Either you're going to have to deny that only immortality is the truth, and everything that lives has eternal life, or death is real and there is no life. There is a statement in the Course that says something like either everything lives forever or everything must die. Because it's got to be one or the other. You have to believe one or the other. They are totally opposite beliefs. They cannot be reconciled. You can't do both at once. So what's it going to be if, there's a, if there seems to be a dead body on the ground? <laughs> um, are you going to believe that what this world suggests is real and true, that it proves something, that it demonstrates death of the Son of God has happened, something real has been lost, which will force you into guilt and grief, or are you going to deny it? Now, people have denial improper denial of death because some something dies something goes away seemingly bodies and such in an attempt not to accept that you believe they have died holding on to the belief and the reality that death is real you can deny that it's happened be unwilling to accept that it's happened and therefore put up a barrier against it of denial. And this is an improper use of denial. This is a double denial. Not only is the death a denial of life, you're now in denial that, you, that death is denying life. And so now you're doubly in denial. And that's part of how people deal with real death a lot. And I've been there, been through that. <laughs> Being in denial is like trying to keep the person alive by refusing to let go and refusing to admit that they are gone, believing that if you will deny that they're dead, they won't be dead. So you actually use denial to try to keep bodies alive because you don't want to accept that the person died because you believe that they really did die because you believe the body is real. <laughs> this produces horrendous grief, so you then have to somehow get past the denial of the de denial of truth being used wrongly to acknowledge you do believe that that person's gone. You think that they're dead. You believe it. And they, it's happened. That at least is less in denial than to just be like, oh, I don't want to accept this, I can't believe it's happening, but I, just, I do believe it's happening. <laughs> it at least is one step less removed from acknowledging what's real. But you then have to get to the point where you recognize the person did not die. They are not really dead. They, death doesn't exist in reality, so this can't be true. They aren't dead. There is no death. There is no sickness. 
and therefore assert that life is true. You must not be dead. You have eternal life. You are immortal. Get up. This is why Jesus says to Lazarus, you know, rise, get up and walk. Because it's like it's somebody who, imagine like a child or something who's playing and they, they lay on the ground and they pretend to be dead. And you know that they are not really dead because you know that they are alive, but they're pretending to be dead. And so you'd be like, come on, I don't believe you, get up. And then they're perfectly capable of getting up because you know, you've, you've been so sure that they really are alive. Um, Jesus talked about how he raised the dead and he has the power to, in, to give spirit or to enliven the dispirited by recognizing that every mind deserves to be healed. And it's like, what position are you going to take? What form of denial are you going to use? Are you going to deny sickness and death? Or are you going to deny eternal life? This is your only choice. Which one is going to be your truth? And as a miracle worker, Jesus is asking you to <coughs> deny the denial of truth. Which means to deny that there is even such a thing as death, to deny that sickness even exists, to recognize there literally is no real sickness, there is no real death, no one can die, no one is really sick. Every seeming sickness is a fucking lie. It is bullshit. The person is an immortal being putting on a show, pretending to suffer, taking out guilt and sin upon the body, making it be in pain and disfigured and distorted and suffering and dying to try to prove that they are not immortal beings. They are lying. It is a total fucking objection to reality. It's a denial of who they are. It's, it's someone is faking it. And this may sound ridiculous or cruel or whatever, but every single death is fake death. Every suicide is fake. You cannot die. You are a mortal spirit, Jesus says in the Course. You are a mortal and you cannot die, but you can confuse yourself with things that do. Accepting your immortality and the immortality of others is the only goal. You are to return to your eternal life in God and accept that you are as God created you, so is everyone else. And anything that says otherwise is bullshit has to be rejected. It has to be not accepted as true. You have to laugh in the face of death, not allow it any power to affect you. Let's go back here. Very sad. Um, true denial is a very powerful protective device. You can and should deny any belief that error can hurt you. Error is death. Error is sickness. Error is malfunction damage, attack, distortion of the body. Um, it's a corrective device. The right mind of the mentally healthy depends on it. And when, when your mind is healthy because you have the correct use of denial, you are miraculous, you are resurrected, you are a resurrector, you are resurrective, and you cause resurrection to happen in other people. You raise the dead through the correct use of denial. So this kind of hit me with a ton of bricks a couple of days ago. <laughs> because I had been buying into the belief, the illusion, the dream, the suggestion from certain people that they are actually sick 
that they are damaged, that they are unhealthy, something's wrong. Jesus and Holy Spirit have been guiding me to really open up to seeing that my job as a miracle worker is not to be, not to buy this crap, not to be deceived like they are deceived, N to not agree with their notion that immortality isn't true, to reject their rejection of the truth. The task of the miracle worker becomes the denial, the denial of truth, because they have obscured their own health through denial. Your job is to shine your light, which is the acknowledgement of what is true and real. Only life is real. Only life is true. Shines into their mind and resurrects it because it's to do with how minds join. And I found this quote yesterday. <clears throat> where when you join your mind with another mind become one with it which requires you to love that mind that person that spirit you connect with their mind, their true self you see a miracle worker begins by perceiving light you see the light in your brother you you recognize his immortal truth and focus on it in him see the Holy Spirit in him it connects your minds and your minds become one your minds are now kind of overlapping and they're sharing when his mind attempts to assert that he is not immortal and he's sick your mind being one with his joined with him in love does not support it and your mind has an influence because you you've joined so now you're sharing thought you're sharing it's like you have like a mind meld you you're both kind of one mind and your refusal to agree that he is sick does not allow him to believe that he's sick. It's almost like you hold back his denial. You reverse his level confusion. You undo his mind's assertion of death by asserting life through his mind. And now he becomes unable to attack himself. And the result of this is that he's the miracle undoes his attack upon his body and his body gets healed. If you withhold agreement and accept the part that you play in making sickness real, the other mind cannot project its guilt. Without your aid in letting it perceive itself as separate and apart from you. So if you don't allow some of the mind to see itself as separate from you because you join in love and there's no separation there if you love the person um, their mind cannot project guilt because in order to project guilt you have to increase separation you have to have some target to put it on you need to disassociate when your mind is joined the joining prevents disassociation thus is the body not perceived as sick by both your minds because his mind can't get rid of the guilt through projection and you're not supporting it you're not allowing it your mind strengthens his innocence uniting with a brother's mind prevents the cause of sickness and perceived effects physical sickness healing is the effect of minds that join just as sickness comes from minds that separate 
<clears throat> so by denying his denial of the truth, you don't support his denial of the truth, it weakens his denial of the truth and he doesn't get to use you as a scapegoat. In your mind, your mind has this power and it's shining this light into his mind and his awareness and it's, it's coming at him from a certain approach and it's saying, I don't believe you're sick, there's nothing wrong with you, you're, you're not sick, you're perfect, you're holy, get up. You, you, you don't need to be suffering, you're not guilty, this isn't true of you. That is supportive. Okay, this is why when if Jesus, either either you heal your brother or you go into fear. And if you go into fear, you will suffer from the delusion that his sickness is real and it will threaten you and you will go into fear and stress and upset <laughs> because you're not being loving and you're not being supportive. So to truly be supportive and be truly helpful, you have to support your brother's health by, in what's that word? Um, promoting it, uh, asserting it. Um, another word, giving it oomph. And this, this empowers him and diminishes his darkness and reverses his denial. It makes, it makes it harder for him to curse himself because you are not co-cursing him and therefore you actually uplift him and heal him and now his sickness goes away because you joined in love. Miracles are expressions of love. When you express love it joins minds and prevents projection of guilt and therefore stops him from projecting it onto his body and his body gets healed. It's all to do with denial. How are you going to use denial? Are you going to use it to block life and make bodies and sickness and death real? Or are you going to use it to promote life and block death and sickness. <clears throat> so it's kind of like your job, it's, it's a tough job because it's the whole world is against it. Fundamentally, even space and time are against you being miraculous. <clears throat> The world is saying this, this is real, this is true, this is in your face, this is the motherfucking disaster that's happening now. And you're like, no it's not. Everything's as it is in heaven. Everything is, is holy and perfect and true. There is no death, there is no sickness, there is no attack, there is no sin and guilt. There's nothing to be afraid of. You should be celebrating and joyful and happy and loved. and healed and whole and you're so you're expressing and asserting a heavenly viewpoint in a world that is opposite heaven <laughs> it's kind of why they call it like a, a, a holy war but it's not heaven would never be at war heaven just asserts life asserts eternal life and the world is the rejection of it um, so everything you do to be miraculous is going to run against the grain of the world. It's going to it's going to be like the world is trying to say this and I am saying this and it's going to be totally opposite. That's not easy because it involves your senses too and your eyes are telling you I can see there's a dead body, I can hear the sounds of pain, I can smell the rotten flesh. <laughs> And your body reports all this and makes it seem real to you and, and tells you this is happening yeah you should really be fucking scared right now even so even your own senses have to be questioned your mind in the opening of the spiritual eye 
has to get to where it can use vision, true perception, to overlook even what the body sees. Because forgiveness doesn't see bodies, it looks past bodies, it looks through these illusions, sees past the deception, doesn't buy into what the world says is true, doesn't accept as real that someone is really sick, doesn't acknowledge that there is such a thing as death. And so we're sort of learning how to take that position and have that perspective and, and express God instead of expressing the evil antichrist ego. Um, either you're host to God or hostage to the ego. Um, So it's difficult because you're, you're having to go against the world, basically. You're going against physical sickness, even against your own senses. But it would be highly beneficial for you to adopt a position where you're going to say, right, from now on, I am not going to believe in death. I'm not going to believe in sickness. Anybody that claims to be sick is full of shit. I'm not going to side with them. I'm not going to commiserate. I'm not going to have sympathy. I'm not going to have false empathy. I'm not going to go into supporting it or enabling it. I might be helpful, maybe I'll get medications for someone, maybe I'll help them with a, a piece of disability equipment, maybe we'll help them cross the street, but not for a second will I accept that they really are what they're suggesting that they are. Because through their sickness they're saying, look at me, I'm a picture of crucifixion, I'm diseased, I'm damaged, I'm weakened, help me. I'm suffering, this is real pain, I, I can't get out of it, poor me. And you like, you're full of crap. That's not true of you. You are an immortal being. Get up and freaking walk and be free. Because you right now you literally are expressing a lie about yourself. You are opposing the truth that God has stated is true of you. You're trying to claim something that isn't true. You are promoting the ego and you're siding against God. Wake the fuck up and be healed. <laughs> I mean, not to use these words necessarily, but that kind of attitude, the total refusal to even accept the idea that death exists, that there even is such a thing as death, that anything real can ever die, and therefore if nothing real can die, anything that does die must be unreal, and your belief that only life is possible shows that death is not possible. There is no real death. The Son of God is free. So as a miracle worker, as a resurrector, as somebody who is accepting atonement and being forgiving and asserting life, only life, only immortality, it's your job to teach only love because that is what you are. It's your job to only teach your brother of the truth about him to not agree with any of his lies, to not side with sickness and death, to not give reality to damaged bodies, to look past them, and to always focus on the only thing that's true of you is the truth that God has set up in reality. You are still immortal, you cannot be sick. This sickness is a lie. I will not support it. I will not side with it. I'm not going to go along with it. I am not going to agree with it. 
Um, in fact, I'm going to assert that it is not there. You don't have it. <laughs> you are. I'm going to assert that you are alive, and that you are repaired, you are healed, you are whole, you are immortal. There's nothing wrong with you. You've never sinned. You're not guilty. You have no reason to be suffering. You don't deserve death. Be healed. Be as God created you, which you are, which I acknowledge that you are. That is uplifting. It is the mind's constructive powers um, instead of destructive. And through that attitude of being clear that you're not sick and you're not dead and you aren't suffering and you're not unhappy because these are all lies they're all bullshit illusions right somebody's unhappy they're not really unhappy they are pretending to be unhappy Somebody's guilty. They're not really guilty. They are pretending to be guilty. They're trying to make out that guilt is real. Their holy self is not guilty. There is no guilt. There is no sin. There is no death. There is no unhappiness. There is no sickness. There is no disease. There is no illness. There is no damage. There is no suffering. There is no attack. There is no um, conflict, there is no war, there is no disturbance, there is no lack of peace, there is no depression, there is no harm, nothing has been hurt. This is, you have to give heaven, give heaven's truth to people in order to assert what is true, because if you don't assert it, you are being a victim and you're just being passive, and, and that means that you do support death and sickness because light shines away darkness and the light of this truth actually dispels sickness and death it supplies a lack miracles supply a lack and sin is the lack of love so by give you have to give the truth give the life miracles mean life God is the giver of life let God give life to others through you Empower them, uplift them, heal them, resurrect them, be a resurrector. Um, otherwise, you are promoting death. You either hurt or you heal. Do not allow your brother to be sick. For if he is, have you abandoned him to his dream by sharing it with him? Thus are you joined in sickness to preserve the gap unhealed where sickness is kept carefully protected, cherished and upheld by the firm belief lest God should come to bridge the little gap that leads to him. Do not allow your brother to be sick. If he is, you have abandoned him to his dream and you have joined him in sickness. Because if he's suggesting sickness is real and I'm sick, and you're like, oh yes you are, I can see that, mm -hmm. you're very sick. You are making him sick and therefore believing in sickness and now you're sick. If you don't heal him, you will join him in sickness and now you're both sick. So you don't have, there's no other choices and there's no alternatives, there's no exceptions. Either you offer God to your brother and heal him and resurrect him or you are destroying both of you. No guilt needed here, <laughs> just a fact. Uh, this is why Jesus says forgiveness is not real unless it's brought a healing to you and your brother. 
to your brother and yourself. You can do forgiveness, but if the forgiveness doesn't get to the point where you actually heal your brother and yourself, and both of you are healed because you're joined in love, and neither of you are still in the state of mind that you were in before, forgiveness is not completed. Because true forgiveness would lead to you loving your brother again, welcoming him, shining light to him, giving him love and appreciation, and healing together, reuniting, joining, to erase the separation between you. You have to be joined. Joined minds produce health, separate minds produce sickness. So if you don't heal your brother, if you don't be a miracle worker, if you don't want to give love to other people, if you don't want to raise the dead, if you don't want to be a resurrector, you will stay sick and you will keep sickness real. Because your only choice is either I am destructive or creative, either I'm promoting death or I'm promoting life. So you've got to choose to, to cancel out all the belief that you have that death is real and true and then promote only life and remind your brother of what is true. a part about you you remember um, you and your brother remember together what the truth is and you must not allow him to forget because his forgetting is your forgetting and your remembering is his remembering because minds are joined so if you if you let him stay in the forgetfulness of believing that he is not immortal you join him in that mortality and you die together <laughs> Yay. If you uh, remember for him what is true of him only and reject everything else, deny the fuck out of everything else, focusing only on what is true, you remember for him and then he remembers along with you because you're joined in love and share minds. And now he is healed because you remembered God for both of you. When I am healed, I am not healed alone. So, what are you going to deny? Because you have to deny something. You either deny eternal life, God, immortality, happiness, love, peace, etc. Or you deny death, suffering, sickness, hatred, attack, murder, unhappiness, depression, etc. It's got to be one or the other because you can't do both. You can't see both those worlds. Denying one denies the other. If you deny heaven, you accept the world's bullshit. If you deny the world's bullshit, you accept heaven. Which one do you want to accept as true? If you only accept that heaven's truth is true, which it is, it would be the same choice. You will completely reject all of the world. All of it. Every form, every body, every sickness, every death. You have to become. You have to become a person who does not believe in sickness. A person who does not believe in death. If you believe in it, if you believe it exists and it happens, you're fucked. <laughs> you have to actually be willing to be like. Sickness is a myth. Death is a myth. 
anybody who <coughs> who even suggests that it exists is delusional all the doctors and the hospitals and the medical systems and the institutions and all that stuff is all there is magic based on the belief that death exists and sickness is real every part of it the doctors and the nurses and the patients are all full of shit this is what I've learned by going through the system being shitted out the other end it's all bullshit it's all a lie because there is no real sickness there is no real death so all that promoting of an assumption that death and sickness exist and are happening is unmiraculous and it's a desire not to heal it's ma magical it's an attempt to, to change forms into other forms as a suggestion that healing's taking place while keeping the mind sick so that it produces more sickness in the future <laughs> not a cure only the atonement can be said to cure uh, atonement heals with certainty and cures all sickness for the mind which understands that sickness can be nothing but a dream is not deceived by forms that the dream may take sickness where guilt is absent cannot come for it is for sickness is but another form of guilt sickness and guilt are the same thing if you don't have guilt you don't have sickness atonement does not heal the sick for that is not a cure i.e. doesn't make sickness real and then start doing stuff it takes away the guilt that makes the sickness possible and that is a cure sickness now is gone with nothing left to which it can return meaning that your health is now guaranteed because without guilt you cannot be sick guilt is in the mind the mind needs to be healed of its guilt when it is not guilty and it's being forgiven sin is undone and the mind is free from guilt a guiltless mind cannot suffer being sane it heals the body the mind cannot uh, the healed mind cannot conceive of illness so our job is to stop buying into sickness and death totally recognize that anybody that even mentions it is full of crap there is not one single person in the whole world who is having a sickness that is being truthful there is no real true sickness it's all part of denial the person who is sick is denying life denying truth sickness is a denial of the truth defense against the truth and so removing the defense removes the sickness which means you have to remove the assertion that sickness exists and death exists you have to stop believing in death if you believe in death you literally are supporting death you are saying I believe death happens that's that's making it happen <laughs> it's like cheerleading for death <laughs> it's it's death worshipping sickness worshipping you should be worshipping God not sickness <laughs> so, so it's it's a weird position to take because it, it flies in the fucking face of the whole bloody planet the whole world is trying to die it is a suicidal self-destructive system every single person in the world is, has mental illness and is trying to be dead it's our job as miracle workers to go against that grain and assert that none of that's true there is only life there is only health there is only happiness and love only the things in God and God's kingdom are real and true everything else is bullshit no one is sick no one is dead and you bring this attitude of you're not sick you're alive 
I don't believe that there's something wrong with you. You're whole and holy. You've never been hurt. You're still a mortal, aren't you? <laughs> this is like giving the gift of life to people. It resurrects them because it doesn't support sickness and death. It's healing. It's miraculous. This is the, how we perform miracles. The denial of the denial of truth. The proper use of denial raises the dead. The proper use of denial rejects all sickness. Sickness is bullshit. Absolute fucking bullshit. <laughs> I bought into it badly and suffered like hell because I believed that sickness was real. And I had false denial trying to block the recognition that I believed sickness was real. And now I'm coming to my senses because the lesson is being learned and I'm not going to fucking support and believe in sickness anymore. Fuck it. I'm done. That's it. No one is sick. Everywhere I'm go, everywhere I go from now on, I'm going to be silently or otherwise expressing, "You're not sick. That's a lie. That's not true. You're whole. You're healed." That's my. That's going to be my attitude, because supporting sickness is fucking bullshit, and I'm done with it. I think I'm going to stop right now. <laughs> I'm gonna get some lunch anyway. Uh, so, live. Live. Choose life. God loves you. See you next time.